What a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> We're it's going to rain again. <laughs> Unreal. We're live. <laughs> Apparently we have rabbits near the house. Bunnies at the house. Yeah. And they're like New York City pigeons. So I just got a text of like, the rabbit was in the driveway that she went to pull in. And the rabbit was like, yeah, no. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, you can, you can this is my that. house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not happening. Um, good afternoon, guys. It's Whiskey Wednesday. Spirits Guide. Live. Watch you some in spirits. Wes Wilson. Here with Corey. Um, What's going on? Here we are. Here we are live. We are live. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so, yeah. We're going to go uh, a little off the rails today and do something different. Honey whiskey. What? Um, yeah. Uh, a little story time with Rich, I guess. So I would say over the last 10 years, we have seen a flood of flavored whiskeys. Uh, vanilla, cherry, peanut butter. Orange. Orange, which we love. Peach, apple, all kinds of flavors uh, of whiskey. Um, and it's something a lot of the big names are doing to I don't know, bring more people into the whiskey fold, make it a little bit more accessible. Uh, flavored vodkas were big in the 90s. Flavored whiskeys are big now. And it does sort of expand the category, um, bring more people in. I know some whiskey purists kind of frown on them, uh, but as we can attest, Sting, great flavored whiskey. Uh, can be more orange, fantastic. What is going on? We have a dog on the loose. Yeah, there's a there's a dog in the store. <laughs> I saw it walk in. There's no way. <laughs> things things are happening. It's it's getting a little weird in here. Um, but actually, the oldest flavor of whiskey uh, is honey. It was the first flavor to be added to whiskey. Uh, in an American whiskey, it starts in 1976, uh, when Jimmy Russell adds honey to wild turkey, uh, creating something called wild turkey liqueur, what we today know as American honey. Um, they would later update that uh, with Sting, uh, which is basically the American honey with ghost pepper added to it. Uh, we don't carry that in the big bottles. I'm not even sure they make it in the big bottles, uh, but it does come in 50 mLs. Or what is known as nips. I may have drank one or two or a hundred nips of Sting in my time. Uh, I actually got to drink Sting at Wild Turkey in Kentucky. It was the first time I tried it. It was at the distillery, uh, which is absolutely gorgeous if you ever get a chance to get down to Kentucky. Uh, since then, a lot of the big names have put out honey whiskeys. Uh, Evan Williams, uh, Jim Beam. Uh, most recently, Jack Daniels uh, has their honey whiskey as well. But in all reality, the history of honey whiskey goes back 150 years. Um, honey's a natural product. We deal with it all the time here uh, with the owner, Charlie, being a beekeeper. So we get a lot of actual, real, natural honey. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys buy a ton of it. It's a monster product for us here. Honey has often been thought of as something special and magical and mystical. Uh, when you go back to 7th century BC, uh, sort of the first records of mead, uh, which means they had bees and honey and they were kind of harvesting that honey. Mead is a wine made from honey because honey is a natural sugar sauce. Uh, that means it ferments, you can ferment it into alcohol yeah. and make wine. Um, Spices were also a big medicinal thing, uh, going back thousands of years. So mixing spices into honey, uh, mixing spices into mead is a natural sort of medicinal thing. Um, mead was considered to be the drink of the gods um, and only drank by the high priests uh, for the gods. Uh, so that's kind of how special honey is. It's not until the mid-1800s, though. No. Um, when a guy stumbles into Scotland, he's given a recipe for a cocktail uh, that calls for cognac, honey, and spices. 
Uh, he takes that recipe, tweaks it, takes the brandy out, replaces it with scotch, uh, and in the early 1900s, Drambuie is born in Scotland as the first honey whiskey. Uh, now, while everybody is kind of wrapped up in our honey whiskeys that we do shots of here, we don't realize that Drambuie, much like you, didn't realize it was actually a whiskey. Yeah, um, no idea. And it's because the laws of Scotland don't allow you to use the word scotch on the bottle if you add anything to it. Uh, so it's actually considered to be a liqueur, but I do believe it is still 80 proof. Yeah, so it's still full strength, 80 proof, uh, whereas a lot of your American honey whiskeys are down around 70 proof. Um, this is full, full octane. Uh, but it can only be classified as a liqueur because it has a flavoring added to it. 1940s in Ireland, uh, the Tullamore Distillery, which had been making whiskey since the early 1800s, uh, wanted an alternative product, an, an alternative to Irish whiskey. And so they had a, a recipe for something called Heather wine, uh, and that's kind of what they based this on. So Heather honey, and I learned this from talking to Charlie, like Heather is a type of flower, so the bees go out and they pollinate that flower and then they go back to the hive and that sort of becomes heather honey. It's okay. like when you see orange blossom honey in the store. Comes uh, from the orange blossom. Yeah, that blossom. means they're, they're near orange blossoms. Uh, I remember one year, Charlie had some honey that had like a spearmint flavor to it. Uh, so we were, he was trying to figure out where there was mint growing huh. near his beehives. That's uh, crazy. So that's really where honey gets its flavor from, is they're bringing back the pollen from whatever flowers are close by. Um, so a lot of heather in Scotland, a lot of heather in Ireland uh, as well. And that's kind of what they're flavoring. Simultaneously in Canada, and there's no real origin story on it, but Yukon Jack is being developed in the 40s. Uh, again, using Canadian whiskey, heather, spices. Um, and then about the 1970s, it starts to come into the US. Uh, this is a little different than all the other honey whiskeys in that it's 100%. So this is meant for surviving the cold in Canada, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and that kind of loops us back around to the 1970s, where we end up with American honey. Um, so I know you haven't tasted these. I haven't really visited these in a while. So we're going to take a fun little journey uh, through the original honey whiskeys up to the current honey whiskeys. Um, we'll start with Drambuie. I'm excited for this one. It's been behind the counter for since I started working here, and I've, I don't know. I've always just thought it was a, those bottles of scotch that was. Yeah, and it, what's funny is, uh, you know, like when I started bartending years and years ago, um, this was on every bar. It was on every bar that I ever worked at. Um, it was that weird sort of, what is this stuff? Uh, kind of thing. Let's see if I can find this on here. Here we go. We're live. Um, and when I used to teach bartending school, we always used to have this joke of like every bar had a bottle of Drambuie. Um, and every new bartender would come in and go like, uh, what's Drambuie? And you go like, I don't know, it's this weird kind of honey scotch thing. Um, people go like, what do you do with it? Uh, it goes in one drink and at that point in time, there was only one drink I knew of, and it was a drink called the Rusty Nail, uh, <laughs> which, in redundancy, this is a Scotch whiskey flavor with honey. The Rusty Nail is Scotch and Drambuie. Ooh. Yeah. Um, people go, like, do you have a server? And I go, like, no. no. But every bartender knew what a Rusty Nail was. It was just kind of that drink. Um, but every bartender had a great Drambuie slash rusty nail story. Um, I kind of forget about this until now, too. My rusty nail story, because every student would go like, what's yours? And so I would always tell the story of, I used to have this guy who came into Tweeds down the street. Um, it's no longer there. And this guy would come in every day. He would get a pint of bud, drain in a snifter, 
get half price appetizers and get boneless buffalo wings five days a week. Unless he was out of town, because he sometimes worked in Africa for the government putting in like plumbing systems. So he would install water systems when they were building wow. things over there. Um, guy had a huge house out in Paxton, monster house. Uh, was married, had a daughter. Uh, the wife couldn't drive for crap from the stories he would tell because every now and then he would tell me about how she dinged up the car, she hit something. Uh, daughter had a boyfriend that he hated. Uh, I think as a joke, he walked out with a shotgun one time when the guy came to pick her up. Um, I knew a lot about this guy's life. Ask me his name. Not a clue. <laughs> Not a clue. I never knew his name. I knew everything about his life, what he drank, where he went, what he did for work. Never knew his name. Bartending 101, know what they drink or know their name. I never knew his name, but I knew what he drank. Yeah. He drank during brewing. Um, Damn, that's crazy. And, yeah, unfortunately, they don't use scotch on there or whiskey on there, uh, except for, like, in fine print, where it says a blend of scotch, whiskey, and heather. But for the most part, it's just labeled as a liqueur. It's gone through some packaging changes. It's back to this sort of original bottle, which to me is very, very elegant, very, very old school. Uh, I feel like if I walked into a bar in Scotland in the 1940s, that would seem right at home on there. Um, yeah, there is a weird... Marcy was here earlier and we tasted it. Something about licorice. experiment and licorice. Yeah, and I kind of get some of that on there. So they don't give you what's in there for herbs. It's some sort of... Everybody's got their own proprietary recipe. But I'm going to assume that there's probably some sort of anise in there. Mm, um, yeah. As every sort of European, Middle Eastern cordial had in it. So I'm not sure with these if they're just adding honey. I know with this... Uh, they actually make a honey liqueur and then blend it with the whiskey. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Mars is pretty spot on with yeah. that. It's like spearmint and licorice. Yep. And it still has the burn. Yeah. The whiskey like. That's salt. You I get like all that. the spice. Um, and we may come back on Saturday um, and just make drinks with these. We're going to make a few today to kind of show you some versatility. But that is just like a hot toddy. If you just took that, oh added some hot water to it, you wouldn't even need anything else, really. Like no, if you had a cold, really. dead of winter, that's that's sort of perfect. Obviously, rusty nail, mixing you know some scotch in there. Works great. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Admittedly, we don't drink a lot of this because it's on the sweeter side. But it really does have its place. Um, yeah. It's sweet, but it also... You can get, like, that artificial sweetness and stuff. This has, like, a sweetness where you, you get where it's coming from. You know? Yeah. Like, you don't get the... Yeah, I mean, the honey part of it. In my, the back of my jaw doesn't hurt from drinking this. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's not that cloying yeah. kind of sweetness. So this one... Irish Mist. And this was, uh, honestly not sure if I like the new package, but for years, it was this weird kind of decanter bottle. It almost looked like a genie bottle. I think I honestly know what you're talking about. Yeah, I feel like everybody's got a grandmother who has a bottle of that like, <laughs> yeah. in their house. Yep. Um, but again, this is made at Tullamore Distillery. Heather Flower Honey. Irish whiskey, spices. This is another sort of old school bottle. Um, I feel like, unfortunately, needs to make a comeback like Drimboy. Like, with as popular as these things are, and I, I feel like as Americans, we just sort of believe we invented everything. And we kind of forget that the rest of the world was doing it well, well before us. Yeah. Feel like more sort of rich honey. Yeah. Less I mean, spice. like just the difference between these two is 
you can already get on the nose. So I had a customer who may be one of the most insane people I ever met. Who is this? You said cousin? No, customer. No, oh, customer. Of, I mean, I have some insane cousins too, but <laughs> we all do. <laughs> and his name was Dr. Jack. I won't use his last name. I don't know if he's even still alive. But he was a psychiatrist in the prison system. Oh, God. <laughs> At Walpole. Oh, my gosh. This story keeps adding on. When Walpole was Walpole. And, uh... <sighs> See the dark junction now? Yeah. <laughs> he used to come into the bar every night, and I'm so happy I get to tell this story on video. Um, he was nutty. So he dealt with the, the darkest of the dark. Story. He dealt with people who did unspeakable things. Um, I won't mention what he used to tell me, um, other than to say that there was one night he came in. He used to have this really raspy voice. And he smoked a lot of cigarettes. And I think to understand those people, you have to kind of become them a yeah. little bit. He had this really raspy voice. And he came in and go, son. Do you know what human flesh tastes like? <laughs> this is not what a bartender wants to hear at 11.30 at night from a <laughs> random customer. The guys tell me it tastes like chicken. <laughs> My hand to whatever savior you believe in. Uh, that is an absolute true story. Oh my, God. my other favorite Jack story was he would come in and go, Son, I like you. When the day of reckoning comes, I'm going to give you three seconds to duck. <laughs> Honest, true story. Hey, man. At least he's looking out for you. Yeah. I mean, I had three seconds to get below the bar before he unloaded. <laughs> the day um, of reckoning. The day of reckoning, as he called it. Um, yeah, that's crazy. But Dr. Jack would drink two things. Polar opposites. He would drink what he called Moby Dick. So it was an earthenware coffee mug filled halfway up with Irish mist topped with black coffee. Or he would drink white Zinfandel. <laughs> Are you serious? Bartenders cannot make this stuff up. This is real. So that's my Irish mist story. I miss Dr. Jack. Here's a Dr. Jack. So now it's down. That's really dark. Yeah, dark. Like honey. bitter honey candy, nutty. The heavens have opened up. I think that's probably Doctor Jack from whatever land he's in. <laughs> he heard you telling the story. Yeah. He's like, I told you not to say anything. It's the day of reckoning. <laughs> yeah, no. So a lot less spice in this. Uh, yeah. But yeah, definitely dark money. Really dark. Yeah. More like that nutty. And then you get. Yeah, it's like the same. Like, we're not like, into the sweet stuff, but like, this is a nice refresher from yeah. the bourbon and the scotches that we like and stuff. So. It's a good sort of nightcap, too. Like, Got a couple, you want one more before you go to bed. Uh, this with a cup of tea. Yeah, seriously. Drop a wedge of lemon in there. Because um, once you put like some citrus in there, it brightens it up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Again. So you're 70 proof. So a little bit more sweetness in the drambuie. But yeah, very, very tasty. Again, another honey whiskey. And like we always try to say, like, just because they're all honey whiskeys, they're all distinctly different. Yeah. Different. I mean, the difference between those two is drastic, for sure. Like, you can definitely tell the difference. All right. The big, the bold, the black sheep of Canadian liquor. 
Yukon Jack. It's another one that people... These say honey on the label, so people kind of know that they're honey liqueurs. They don't realize that they're honey whiskeys. People just think this is a whiskey, and there's no sort of sort of indication that it's honey flavored. Uh, but again, honey and spices. So you get Scotch whiskey, Irish whiskey, Canadian whiskey. At 100 proof, um, when I first started bartending, this was a big, big shot. Squeeze a little bit of lime juice in there. It would be called snake bites. Oh, they make this up? Yeah. Yeah, they actually kind of flavor it up a little bit. They make a lime one. They make like a, a fire one. Yeah, I think they make a fire one. Uh, they make an apple one. Yep. They used to make something called permafrost, which was like their McGillicuddy's. Yeah. Okay. But their whole thing is that they were 100 proof. I feel it's got a little bit more like lemon on the nose. Like, yeah, there's definitely less honey. Yeah. But yeah, lemon that makes it like citrusy a little bit. It's gonna sound awful, but like just like lemon pledge. I don't know. What's that? Like something you clean your tabletop with. Okay. Like yeah. Okay. Like yeah. a furniture. Yeah. Cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I can. Which I don't have any fun Yukon Jack stories. <laughs> it just happens to be Yukon Jack, though. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got spicy honey, dark honey, citrusy honey. And maybe the most bang for your buck at that hundred proof. Uh, we don't have any of Charlie's honey in right now. Um, he hasn't been able, with all the rain, he hasn't actually been able to get out there and harvest any of the honey. Um, but hopefully soon we'll have some back uh, in stock. I actually like that. I do too. But I think it's the least favorite out uh, of... For me, at least. It's yeah. good, though. Like, it's like again, it's totally different than the other two. Yeah, I mean, it's that, not... That was the most different out of all, I think. Yeah, it's not the most sophisticated or stylish. I'm not drinking that out of a snifter like I would Drambuie. Uh, but if you're going to a concert... And, you know, trying to send some back before you walk yeah, in. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a pint of that like might be just what does the trick. <laughs> yeah. Since we're at it, we might as well kind of go after a couple of styles of American honey flavored whiskey. Um, we'll start with the Evan. This was the first one I ever had. I remember when this first came out, not even sure I was aware of the wild turkey one, uh, but I remember tasting this when they launched it at a trade show. I was working in another store at the time. I tasted it and I thought, this is amazing. Um, and then I went back to the store I was working in and I called the buyer and I said, you need to buy this for the store now. And we turned it into a quiet little monster there. I remember when it launched it was... $13.99 on the shelf. And when they introduced it, it had a $10 mail-in rebate. What? <laughs> so we were buying it for so four bucks a bottle. Yeah, that's crazy. And I had the rebate check within like two months. Like they honored that. Um, <laughs> They're basically paying you to drink it. Yes. Yeah. That's insane. So, fun little thing. Uh... Drambuie is owned by the people who own Glenfiddich now. Irish Mist is owned by Heaven Hill, who yep. owns uh, Evan Williams. I'm not sure who owns Yukon Jack. Jack Daniels, obviously. Brown Foreman, owned by Jack Daniels. And owned 
by Wild Turkey, which is actually owned by Campari. I like the Evan a lot. It's good balanced whiskey, um, honey. In comparison, though, wow, is that so much sweeter? So much sweeter. It's like that sticky yep. thing you get on your lips. It's like. Mm hmm. And I feel like, just in the color, you can tell like, that you're, you're using way less. Work. Maybe the same amount of honey, but I feel like the honey is just lighter in color. Yeah. It's, uh, it's good, though. Yeah. Woo! But that's going to explain why I drink it the way I drink it. We get to it. And then the last one we'll taste. We would taste the Jack, but I don't have a bottle of it. So we just sit by and hold it. It's a bold move, Cotton. Lastly, the American Honey, which was the first American honey whiskey in the market, created by Jimmy Russell. Wild Turkey at its base, 71 proof, because Wild Turkey doesn't do anything right on either. You know, the bourbon is either 81 or 101. Yeah. And you can tell the difference between the wild turkey base and the Evan Williams base. I like that a lot. Uh, the American Honey reminds me of like cereal corn jacks or something like that. Oh yeah, like um like corn pops or yeah corn pops. Yeah. Or honey was or like yeah. super smacks or whatever. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, trigger smacks. I don't think they call them trigger smacks anymore. No, but, yeah, I you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like that corn light whiskey with that sweetness of honey. Mm -hmm. Alright. That was good. Yeah, I like that a lot. So, I'm going to do a couple of cocktails because, yeah, we've got honey whiskey. They're great for shots. Um, sometimes on fun, Sunday fun day, we'll throw one of these in the cooler on ice and chill it out. Do some communal shots together. Uh, but if shots are not your thing, you're looking for a refreshing summer cocktail. we got a couple ideas for you. Since it's raining, nobody's going anywhere right now. Give you a couple ideas. I think we definitely, if we can, shoot something on uh, Saturday. Try to play with some actual like cocktails. Yeah. <clears throat> play around with old fashions and, and whatnot. Um, I'm not here Saturday. Huh. We'll come back in two weeks. I got a family thing. So if you're wondering what to do with uh, American honey, some unsweetened iced tea. So we already got the sweetness from the actual yeah. whiskey, so. I don't have any lemons with me, but. Uh, that would be the garnish. Yeah, a little bit of citrus. See if they got iced tea, definitely it would. Uh, I've been loving this. Spoon thing I the one you gave me. Yep. I've been using it a bunch recently. too easy. Yeah, that's a... Uh, it's refreshing. Like. Yeah, the tea dilutes a little bit of the sweetness, too. Um, 
I mean, honey and tea is just a natural, natural pairing. Um, bourbon and tea is a natural pairing. <laughs> Stevie Robar, yes, I've been busy. I will call you when I'm done with this. I promise you. Um, so honey and tea. that you can use this in cocktails um, and really if you're gonna drink drink good stuff um, kind of find that people are drinking better so if you're gonna drink less you might as well drink better um, get some lemonade some drambuie by the way these are interchangeable I mean you can do tea with Evan Williams or Jack Daniels or Irish Mist. Um, you can really do anything, you know. Switch it up to your your preference. Take a sip and then try something. Mm. You know what you're about to do. Wow. Yeah, that's delicious. Yeah. You're still getting that dark, dark honey in that back. Spices are coming through. It actually makes the lemonade less sweet, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, what we do is we're going to twist. A little half and half? A little half and half. A little John Daly action going on here. <laughs> Not for nothing. John Daly was the man. Oh, man. You see his son? No. He's the same exact person. But he's like 12. <laughs> A little half sea mullet absolutely bombs the ball. Doesn't drink yet, but it's it's probably smoking drink. cigarettes. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I kind of want to freeze that and make popsicles out of it. I mean, that is unreal. That being said, I actually think this one might work a little bit better in that. But yeah. Again, they're all sort of interchangeable. You can freeze it like this, make it like an Italian ice type thing out yeah. of it. Eat it. Yeah, that's pretty tasty. Yeah. I could crush those all day. Yeah. All both, day. Both Sunday. of these are unbelievable. Yeah. And then the last one we'll do and we'll let you guys get back to the rain or <laughs> maybe you'll leave and come down here and buy some whiskey. And this one is my favorite thing to do with honey whiskey. Um, and I think anybody I've ever recommended this to kind of falls in love with this drink. Um, good friend Dan, who we ran a lot of benefits for and uh, survived that horrific motorcycle accident. Uh, when we lived together, this is what we used to drink all the time. And it became like that scene in Pirates of the Caribbean. He was on the beach. He's like, why is the rum gone? Well, we we would, yeah, we would walk around the apartment at the end of the room, but why is the Evan Williams honey gone? Um, <laughs> that was before they made it in handles. Um, we'd actually giggle to each other and do the prior supper. But why is the rum gone? I absolutely love this. Uh, this is my favorite application of it. Um, the sweetness of the honey, the spice of the ginger beer. We have a good selection of ginger beer here. I'm using Fever Tree. Why? Because it's the best. It's the best. Um, and this again with a little wedge of lemon. I love ginger beer. Perfect. 
the balance of the spice of the ginger and the honey. Perfect. Oh, Harmonious. Wow. So there we are. Honey whiskey. Who knew um, that real whiskey drinkers would actually drink? I know. Out of all the things, when you were like, what was it, Saturday? You were like, <laughs> Friday, yeah. actually. We're going to do honey whiskey next week. I was like, what? <laughs> well, and much like everything, when I got into it, I started going down the rabbit hole. Yeah. I started here. I ended up there. Um, it, but it makes sense. Alcohol was always considered to be medicinal. Honey's always been considered to be medicinal. Yep. Spices were always medicinal. So it all kind of blends together. Um, honey's delicious. So yeah, not this Saturday, but next Saturday we'll come back. We'll make some actual cocktails with this. Uh, try to give you even more ideas of what to do with it. Until then, lemonade, iced tea, ginger beer. And rain. And rain. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Wow. That is fantastic. <laughs>